Winter's giving in. I know it's hard to find. Real ones that's once in a so right now, it's the holiday season, my favorite time of the year, but it's also a really emotional time of the year too. So what we did in Bangkok is got together with a group of travelers and expats for what we are now calling the exchange. And we sat down and talked about the emotions, the triggers, the good, the bad, the ugly that we deal with as expats and travelers. You know, we get homesick. We start second guessing if we made the right decision, if we should move back home. We're so far away we miss major events like new babies promotions your new homes sometimes we're missing funerals we're missing weddings but just know that we see y'all we're here we miss y'all we love y'all and this episode is really special for me and is dedicated to all of the travelers all of the expats who out there who go through these same emotions and to all of our families and our friends just know that we love y'all and call us sometimes okay I'm so grateful for everyone that I've been able to connect with on this journey. And I just want to say, I love you guys. Welcome to The Exchange, where we get together and exchange different topics, exchange good energy, good vibes, and we talk about different things that affect us as travelers of color, expats of color. So we all live here in Thailand and we are getting together today. We're going to do some introductions. We're going to do some guided meditation with Tori J and then introduce different topics. So right now we are approaching the holiday season and with that sometimes comes the different feelings of being homesick, not being at home and able to celebrate with your family. And so today we're just going to talk about that and just exchange good energy. We got the waterfall in the background. We got the incense. So let's get started. I am Tori. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I've been living in Thailand for two and a half years. I am Ashley. I am from New York, and I've been traveling back and forth to Thailand for a year and a half now. I am Tori J. I'm from Washington, D.C., and I've been living here for a year and seven months. I'm Malik from Atlanta. I've been in Bangkok or in Thailand for about five Long years now. <laughs> yeah, no, every time I say it, it's like, oof. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like that's going to be me so. <laughs> yeah, like, I've been here like seven years, I think. Yeah. I'm Imani. I've been here four months and I live in Thailand. So great. <laughs> I'm Julian. I'm 33 from Detroit. I've been in Thailand for a year and nine months now. Came over here with my beautiful wife. <laughs> I'm Nikki. I'm a beautiful wife. I have also been in Thailand for a year and nine months. Nice. Awesome. So now we're going to lead into some guided meditation with Tori J. So if everyone can just get comfortable, whatever position that you're in, you don't have to sit in a special direction. Just make sure that you're super comfortable. You can close down your eyes for a second. Just take a few breaths. Just becoming aware of the body. If your feet are on the ground, just noticing the soles of your feet connecting to your shoes, connecting to the ground. And just start to draw the energy up from your feet through the body. So starting from the feet to the ankles, the shins, the knees, the thighs, the hips all the way up the spine on an inhale take your shoulders up to the ears exhale rotate the shoulders back and down let's take a few more of those inhale the shoulders up exhale them down let's take one more inhale the shoulders up nice and high exhale let them drop as far away from the ears as possible Getting nice and comfy into your body, into your positioning. We're all coming here today to create some good energy. It's already beautiful energy in this room. We just want to take a moment of gratitude that brought us all here into this space to be able to share with each other, to share with anyone who's looking for guidance during this holiday time. May our hearts be open 
to receiving anything that we need to receive from this session, whether it's healing, whether it's just community, whether it's just somewhere to vent or just listen. And we're gonna get that today. Taking another deep inhale through the nose. Exhale out any sound. Whatever feels good, let's take two more of those. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, any sound that feels good. You can shake the body out. One more deep inhale. Make it be the deepest inhale you take all day. Exhale. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Slowly flutter the eyes open. Mm, let's get started. <laughs> yes, that was good. That was good. I like that. Okay, so let's just start with a quick check-in. The holidays are coming up, like, you know. Um, how is everyone feeling? Just what are some of the feelings that everyone is kind of experiencing this time of the year? I think I'm pretty good. Um, it's hot. I mean, <laughs> I think one thing I miss uh, about the holidays back home, it's, you know, it's cooler, a lot cooler. Yeah. Um, so the heat's here now, but I'm still enjoying the holiday season. Got my friends around me, but I'm good. I think um, I'm at a nice place right now in terms of this time of year. Um, and where I'm at, so. That's good. Yeah, personal. Yeah. Today was a struggle for me to leave my condo, to leave the bed, to get up and function. Like, I've been struggling. I know I come from somewhere where it gets snow. I know some of you guys are also from places where there's snow. Mm -hmm. So I'm so used to having like the snow be a part of like the festive season. Mm -hmm. So even seeing the decorations, they have tons of decorations on the malls here. It just doesn't feel right that I don't have a coat on or a scarf or some gloves or something like that. It just feels like holiday, but just so off, very, very off to be here during a season that I'm used to it being cold during, for sure. I'm, I mean, being from Detroit, I am used to snow. I don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, I, so, like, and then the festive season, I used to be in retail, so like, I don't, I really don't care about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty good. I, I think, like last year on the day of, and I thought about missing my family on the day of, and like when it got maybe like a day or so before. But other than that, I'm cool. Like. I, I didn't grow up celebrating holidays anyway, so it mm. don't really matter to me. I just want to kick it off out. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Like a question of like, does everyone even have a tradition of celebrating holidays at home? Because I think that like some people don't have like a strong tie to like what you did on Thanksgiving or did you travel to go see a lot of family or was it was it not even a big deal in your household? Well, I mean... No, yes and no. Like, it was for my father, not my mother. And, like, at some point, we went over, like, my family's house when I was growing up, and then we stopped. Um, so it wasn't that big a deal, but it really took me out after being in retail. And then um, in 2012, I spent Thanksgiving by myself. Mm -hmm. So it's really not a thing for me. Okay. Um, but... It is for her, so. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we come from very different backgrounds as far as celebrating holidays. And, and it was always a really, really happy time and family getting together. And then um, as my grandparents got older and sick, and then my grandmother passed away this year, um, and everything changed, and it never really felt the same. So it, over the last, I don't know, I would say like five years, holidays were definitely different. Um, and then we started actually going to his dad's side of the family for the holidays but what's i'm struggling with this time is that my grandfather's really ill and i'm we can't afford to go back we we wanted to for christmas and we've had some recent deaths in the family as well um and so this is a situation where we want to go we want to be able to be with our family because we've had some difficult things happen and we just can't afford it we've already visited the u.s twice in the last eight months that's interesting. I've only been home one time in the past two and a half years, mm -hmm. which is like when I think about it, that's a lot. Like, <laughs> I'm like, dang, my mom has only seen me one time in the two, past two and a half years, or like my friends or my mm -hmm. goddaughter. But mm -hmm. then, like for me, 
I'm really in a grind and hustle hustle mode. And I know that like what's coming is the ability for me to fly home whenever I want to or like fly them over mm-hmm. or just be able to just have like a little bit more freedom. And so even though it's sad right now, I'm just like, okay, but like I'm hustling, like I'm doing this for a reason. And like that kind of keeps me going. Mm-hmm. And also just like happy. It's like I'm happy here. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. I haven't been home in the, the whole time I've been here, the whole year and seven months. And everyone keeps asking me, when am I coming back? When am I coming back? And I'm like, I don't have a reason. Right? I was like, I'm genuinely just happy here. Like, I, there's nothing that, I mean, I do miss my friends and family, but it's like, I genuinely like my life here. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. How many of you guys have had your friends or family come here and visit you? No, for you. I've had two. Like, okay. for me, a few, but not really too many. Like, mm. people come to Thailand. And they're like, hey, Malik, I'm in the country. You want to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So right? So it's yeah. not coming to visit me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In, in the, the country. Yeah. Like, yeah. Other friends that I have, their families come like twice a year. Yeah. Their yeah. friends come and visit every now and then. I'm like, Dang, that's yeah. 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 Not me um, either. Yeah. yeah but same. if they're here, they'll message me and we'll hang out. But um, like my mom hates flying. My dad oh, would not fly. My brother and sister, they're just too busy with their work and stuff. So yeah. it's just like. All right, I've been abroad for so long, literally like five years here, and I was in South Korea for like four years. No family can visit me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now that I think about it, it hurts a little bit. Yeah. It's a little bit sad. Yeah, it is. yeah I mean, it kind of, but people have their reasons for why they didn't come. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I'm in a new place. Come yeah. be a part of this experience yeah. with me. Like, see why I like it so much. Right. And yeah. kind of feel like the feelings I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whenever, I, whenever I get like that, I always try to put myself back where I was before I came over here. Mm. And like the mindset in the United States is very different than mm. living abroad or, or be, mm. even just traveling. Like the mindset is so crazy. Like we didn't talk to so many people and they always talk about how bad the flight is. And I'm like, right. first of all, the first thing they say. Yeah. Uh-huh. well, and right. we, like a lot of my family is over six foot too. So <laughs> <laughs> like their leg room ain't, that, ain't, ain't really that great. But it is very different because I thought the same thing before we flew before we flew over here. The international flights are way better than oh yeah, oh. even flying economy. Right. Yeah. It's like right. yeah. yeah, as many Ooh. hot meals Ooh. as you can eat, right? Yeah. right. 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 And they make vegetarian options. Sandwiches. I don't know if it has to do with like. The Eastern hospitality. Yeah. Uh-huh. I know we talk about Southern hospitality all the uh-huh, time, uh-huh. but that Eastern hospitality is something. Is like, yeah. come, man, the, the crew members are so nice. Yeah. The yeah. 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 You know yeah. how you know how um, on some like U.S. flights or whatever, if you if you fall asleep and like the cart then came like you yeah, yeah out, no. <laughs> I my flight, no lie, my flight, my most recent flight here from the U.S. I mean, they put a little note on your on your tray <laughs> table that's up. They yeah. put a little note like you know when, you can always order whenever you're ready if you fall no. asleep. Oh, 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 I was like, I miss my meal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. See, that's yeah. the thing, like, because I'm always in, like, protection mode, yeah. especially on law and stuff. So I never sleep on domestic flights. I never sleep on domestic flights. We didn't, I mean, domestic flights usually are probably, like, four or five hours. So yeah. even if I am tired, I'll just stay up. But there, I could chill. I could put her on the inside, but I could chill. Like, I can I have my nice barrier <laughs> to, uh, to make sure she's safe. But other than that, I can actually sleep uh-huh. on... Yeah. International flights, but yeah, I didn't tell tell family. They like, nah, man, that flight too much, dog. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the really? biggest. That's the biggest excuse. And then you know, and I feel like initially before I came here, I was dreading the flight too because mm-hmm. I I don't like to fly too much. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm alright with it. I just Michael Jackson. But, um, fly, um, fly. Um, no, like I was dreading the flight too, but uh. after it had like it really went. But even the fifteen hours, mm-hmm. when yeah, I'm so yeah, late, it does. It goes like I when I tell yeah. you, I watched every movie I had seen <laughs> in the theaters. I know. What? It's uh, a fast I just, jet. How you get over fifteen hours? No, like, probably had like a stop. Oh, or something. oh I had to stop. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh no. Okay, my like whole flight. Oh, no, no, no. I had, like I had a third. The whole flight was like twenty. Twenty and a half hour flight. Mm-hmm. With, but that was my second flight. So my first flight was fifteen hours, mm-hmm. and okay. then my my second flight was three and a half. Yeah, no, it wasn't that bad. I slept. I slept in between. No, no, no. 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 
Just we, the food. The food on the plates is the best part. Because, <laughs> you know, the message, they give you maybe peanuts and then you got to pay for everything mm-hmm. else. Some in the U.S. Like, don't they don't even give you regular meals anymore. No. So, that was that's a treat for me. The food, <clears throat> the best part. But, yeah, I try to get my, my mom. The, the biggest reason why I haven't definitely, like, moved for good here is is my family and that whole concept of with that flight like we're not coming to see you kind of thing and mm-hmm. I'm you know I, I my extended family I really don't care but like my mom and my sisters mm-hmm. that's the problem like I I'm so I'm very very close to like my youngest sister like we're like the same person so to think that I won't see her for a certain amount of time oh my god why am I we got tissue for her. Oh, <laughs> I know how that feels because I feel like that too. I was like, man. I mean, I when I when when, that, when my sister went to college, uh, she she got friends on her freshman year because they were like, oh, you the girl whose sister cried when um <laughs> when she when she was leaving because I literally cried for three years every time we left her at school. <laughs> so that's that's my baby. That's my my yeah. little sister. Like we are t- so that tight. Mm-hmm. So to think that. You know, mm-hmm. I'll be here and she won't be able to come visit me or she just, like, that would really drive me crazy. Mm-hmm. No, it's crazy because I, I feel the same way about um, my my sister. And she's actually a year and a half older than me. Mm-hmm. But we were always close growing up. Uh, so close, she put a hole in my head when she tried to hug me. She bust my head open on the speaker. But <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, Whoa, it was crazy. I always remember that because, like, <laughs> When I get hurt, or if I get hurt in my feelings or something like that, I always think about what the intent was. So, like, my sister, when she did that, she was trying to hug me. Right. And, unfortunately, she made a mistake, and she hit my head on the back of the speaker. So, I always think like that. Like, like when I'm saying, I try to put myself in that mindset of what their experience. Like, there's a lot that goes on in people's lives, mm-hmm. including our family. Somebody mm-hmm. once told me. Uh, people are people, no matter who they are to you. It could be your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your wife, your yep. husband. People are people, and we have to we have to remember that. And it's and it sucks because it's like you don't want to make excuses for anybody, but it offers me a little bit of solace. Oh, sorry. But I do want my I do want my sisters um, joy. Candace, Carmen, Leah. Shout outs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my dad. Dad, come on, man. Shout come out. back. My dad, my dad crazy. So, so, so this your dad visit? No, no um, one's nobody's, not. Nobody's been dope. Closest person, uh, this girl, she was in one of our short films. She came and she says like, hey, I'm being Tyler. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those like <laughs> DM'd yeah. on IG like, hey, we're going to be in Bangkok next week. What are you doing? I'm like, oh. Uh, she got a job. So. <laughs> <laughs> Living life. Yeah. I think that's another thing. People are like, what are you going to be doing? It's like, I work. work. <laughs> I, I, I live my life. Yeah. Like, I got stuff you guys too. ever get that? Like your friends back home and be like, oh, you're so brave for living abroad. You're, yeah. so, oh, like, you're so lucky. You're yeah. so like, yeah. brave, lucky. I could never do that. Yeah. Like, brave and lucky. Yeah. 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 I think the people that lucky, that lucky yeah. thing. Lucky part like, kind of bothers me. Right, right. I'm like, no, I knew what I wanted yeah, and I worked I for it. And I did it. I'm the type of person that, yes, I believe you have to save up for, you know, have savings for future and all that stuff. But, you can't take that money with you. It's right. my biggest thing. Right. Like you can't take that money with you. So I rather save up and go on these like crazy adventures yeah. and be broke after. And because <laughs> money is always going to come, you can yes. always make yeah, money, that. but yeah. you can't always, always make always memories. But well, that's hard. I you mean, know what I mean? Around, so baby, right? if you can get money, money, money will come right. back. So it's like <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> get these the experiences that money can not buy. Yeah. But yeah. even though you know what I mean, like yeah, yeah. if people at my job are always like. How do you ha- how can you afford? Why? Yes. Because we make the same, and I don't spend my money the way that you do. That's so I'm just buying. I'm not, you that's know, I'm not enough. buying sneakers every week, every Friday, yeah. or you know, I I have my priorities. And yeah, my priorities exactly. Yeah. Live, live to live my life. Travel yes. was huge on our priority yeah, yeah. all the time. People said, "How can you afford to do it?" Like you said, because we don't go eat out every day because we, you know, I, we we budget for it. We right. literally in our budget was like, okay, and we'll put this much away for our next trip. And yeah. then we would make that trip happen. But that, and that's what I'd say. I keep bringing it back to the mentality. Like, 
Yeah, Especially as yeah. as black people and yeah. as women in general, like we have to present a certain way. So I always think about that. It's like you can't just roll up. Like I was thinking about it because I I was doing no shave November, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I was like, man, I need I need to shave. I need to take care of it. And it, I don't think white dudes got that same you know perception that they have to present a certain way. So when people talk about like, oh my god, how do you afford all this stuff? Yeah, I'm not buying stuff like that, but I get it's like you you gotta have nice clothes, you gotta have nice shoes, you gotta have a nice car. Unfortunately, you don't have to have a nice house for some odd reason. But yeah, it's just it's just mindset because like being lucky or being like, Oh, you yeah. you're brave, it's like, no, like my mindset was that I was ready to like grow and mm-hmm. thrive and at the that moment, like the United States was not it for me. Like, right. like I was ready to find But it is home. bravery, isn't it? It is there yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 You're literally yeah. uprooting from something that you uh, only know yeah. and you're going yeah. to a whole different place where you literally have to learn everything over again. Yeah. And it is a little yeah. bit but of luck because that I was, came, real. like came, on the other way, some people yeah. don't have the luxury that we have had. Yeah. Oh, have, absolutely. You know, like, yeah. I mean, sure. for one, we're, we're we're able to do it because whatever our job requires us to be able to travel or we have a reason to be here or the financial to do so right like some people like that i grew up with like leaving like the city yeah. wasn't a real thing for them you know so i mean right. there is a, there is an amount of luck that we do have that's yeah. Um, yeah. yeah privilege, privilege yeah. For sure. i agree yeah. with that um but at the same time i think that we're able to like see that there is a bit more beyond like where we're yeah. from you know be able to like step out beyond our little boxes and say all right there's more well and we can get into and that there i think you know like there's a lot of people and you know we're all from the u.s at here today but there's a lot of people in the U.S. that are so stuck that, like, it's so dangerous when you leave. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, this yeah. is the best place in the world. Right. Why would you leave here? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. listen, though, I it's say not that. really. I say that all the time. Yeah. That it's not, people have a weird perception mm-hmm. of They're like, what, what happens if you go to the hospital? I'm like, I go and I have a personal hostess take me around the Literally. hospital in Thailand. <laughs> yeah. America is, like, crazy expensive. Yeah. And mm-hmm. again, it's like, it's, we're doing things that, like, we're just doing because you're supposed to be doing it. Yeah. Whereas, like, you make this decision, like, I want to live a life where, like, I'm exploring different parts of the world, a new culture. Like, for me, it was, like, I was ready to, like, also explore myself. Right. And I've definitely been able to do that. And, yeah. like, you even kind of, like, recreate yourself in a way. Like, do y'all feel yeah. like that? Yeah. 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 When you go back, I mean, I know you haven't been back, but when you do, it's a totally mm. different thing. Like, yeah. because even just my month here last year, I was like, y'all not on my level when yeah. I went back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, y'all not even on the same You just know, like, you, your mindset is like, I'm, I'm way more worldly than you. Let me sit my seat kind of thing. Like, it's just, you, you just... You because you're exposed you're exposed to so many different things. You know, Instagram and 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 Facebook and social media will have you think that because yeah, we having fun and we great and everything, but they will have you think that traveling is just this wonderful thing uh-huh. because you see all these uh-huh. great pictures, but then you don't see what happens in between right. those pictures. Well, you I mean, know you what gotta I mean? Stay woke, but, and yeah. <laughs> it's like it's you're exposed to so much different trials and tribulations when you mm. when you when you leave you know yeah. what i mean when you leave your comfort or you leave even little things that i you know i'm not the biggest u.s advocate at all because mm. i obviously i really feel like that's not my place like I've, i'm i'm gonna be somewhere else and it's definitely not gonna be there but there are some things that had to be like okay i gotta be grateful that the u.s is this way mm-hmm. um certain things that mm. you're exposed to that you're like oh wait you know, I, I ain't in Kansas no more, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> like, it's it's really, but it builds, my, like we were talking about, like you said, it builds character. Like, just remember, it's building your character. And that's something our sister continuously said. Whenever anything happens to me here, she's like, but you're building character, so shut up. <laughs> that's like, true, girl. But it, you, 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 you get a thicker skin. I thought I was, I had a thick skin from New York, but shoot, traveling and, you know, living abroad, like, gives you that thick skin, like. When you go back, I like agree. we ain't on the same level. Like exactly. you can right. a lot of like, at my table at lunch. My, okay? <laughs> Come and get these. A lot of like <laughs> my when I like my family like didn't as well as like not support me moving here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like when I moved here, I moved here three days after I graduated from university. Oh wow. Like wow. I didn't even go back to DC. I left from Texas where I went to school. Wow. So the last people I saw were if I went to university with you or if you came to my graduation. Wow. So there's tons of family I haven't seen in 
multiple years. My like tons of people. So the only people I saw was like my mom, my dad, my sister, mm. and then all my friends that I went to university with. And my graduation was a very, very tense, tense, tense situation because I was convinced I was going at graduation. So my family already knew, but no one agreed with me. And wow. so they were they were at my graduation, but it was just like we wasn't really talking. Mm. You know, it was really awkward. So when I moved here, I like I paid for my flight here. I paid for everything here. No mm. one was supporting me, helping me, anything like that. I'm glad I had a, like one of my best friends. Her family offered to let me put my stuff in their house because I didn't have money for storage. Because I just mm. spent all my money on a flight, and it was it was a crazy, crazy time. I came over here literally like crying, like I was yeah. so alone and so upset because I was like, this is something so beautiful. I'm literally mm-hmm. stepping out of so many blocks that sh- none of my friends were traveling and leaving the country after college. Everyone mm-hmm. was like, where are you about to go work? You know, yeah. Yeah. no one was doing what I was I doing. Mean, I had no one to look <laughs> at. And at the same time, the people that I wanted to support me weren't supporting me from behind me. So when I was like at the airport, my friend drove me to the airport wow. and it was just, it was all this just crazy things going on. And when I got here, I was just like, I was like writing all the time and I was like, something has got to give, like something's going to happen, like this is the right decision. And I had to really sit there and try to convince myself because so many people were against me Mm -hmm. for making this move back home. And then when I moved here and I finally kind of like got out of that like loneliness and kind of got myself out, met people and started building my life here. It was like, then the same people who were like trying to get me to come back home or wanting to come visit and I was like, none of you guys were there for me when I was first like moving here or right. leaving. Right. And it's like, I don't even want to come back because at the same right. time, like my life is so good here. Mm. Like no thanks to so many people. And it's like that that really just like kind of made me look at like when people from back home were looking at like, oh, like you're doing this, you're lucky, you're brave, you're blah, 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 all these different things. I was like, no, this was the hardest thing I ever had to do right. because I literally thought this was an amazing opportunity. Then yeah. I'm calling people and they're like, what are you talking about? You're moving to Thailand. Like straight faces, no smiles, no happy. I'm over here like, yes, I'm moving to Thailand, blah, blah, blah. And they're just like, no, you're not. Like, why would you want to do that? Like they're holding people back as well. And that's why I also noticed that I was like, I always felt like I needed someone to like guide me or to be in front of me. And then I had to really sit down and be like, dang, Tori, like you got to be your own guide. Like you yeah. literally are going to be the first person to do this yeah. for yeah. so many people. Yeah. And that's such a lonely, lonely place to be in. And I had to learn like, dang, Tori, like you want that, but- you're going to have to be that for yourself because somebody else is going to be in that same position and they're not going to have anyone to look at. And it's like, you should be that person that's supporting them because I didn't have yeah. that same kind of like community that's like, oh, I can call yeah. them back home. They can mm-hmm. do this. I can go back home. Like all these different things. It was like, dang, like, okay, Tori, like you about to be at the front of this. Like people right. are looking at you. Right. Like right. don't you know, go back lonely. because they're not yeah. supporting you. And don't I, go back to that. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what's beautiful about our generation too because first of all, like in the black communities, we're not we we don't support stuff like gap year. We don't support no. yeah. you graduate. Yeah. I know, like <laughs> we don't support yeah. stuff like okay, when you graduate college, you can come live back home for a year while you mm-hmm. figure out stuff. But we don't support that. And realistically, when you do have that type of support, that is when you have like that freedom to say, like, okay, you know what, like my family kind of has my back. Mm-hmm. And even if I move to Thailand for three months, it doesn't work out. Like I've learned something and I still have somewhere to go yeah. back. Right. And exactly. like, we don't have that. And like, it really does build character. Mm-hmm. It helps you just like explore yourself, but also like, it just opens up your mind and so much opportunity. Right. Comes from that. Cause if you stay and I mean, we're all, we're supposed to graduate from high school, mm-hmm. go to college, get a job, yeah. buy a house, have, get, married. get married and have kids, have kids. and die. And die. And die. And, 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 and buy you, Black Friday shopping and go get yeah. 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 And, when, and all this stuff. And when you become the outlier who like deviates off that mm-hmm. path, everybody goes, oh, no, no, no. It's, yeah. 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 But it's like, it's our lives. We we don't have to keep doing that same thing. Like, who's, like, who? Obviously, there's you know, no rule like, book. Society is telling us this, but it's like that ain't what we have to but do. There is no guideline for how yeah. you're supposed to live your life. But we gotta rec- We also we gotta recognize that we are those pioneers. We are those. Is that leaders. right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. My homeboy Kamal is probably the reason why I'm able to do this because uh, that my bad year, 2012. He was one like, yo, let's get out of the country, go and and and, and recharge. He. Him, me, and my boy Damien, we all went to Montreal. And that was just Canada. But it was so different for me. Mm-hmm. And it helped, it helped me heal. It helped me. It just opened up my eyes like, yo, the world is a bigger place. Right. Like, even if you, even if the States is where you want to be, like, you can still go see other places. Mm-hmm. Right? But we, 
I get what you're saying about people not being on our level. We got to bring them there. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. absolutely. We gotta, we absolutely. Gotta I, I completely agree, especially for our community as yeah. black people. We, we need to make sure that we are uplifting each other. And we're, we're opening up doors for our friends and family that didn't, they didn't think that they can walk through. Right. Like my, I think for my family was that I, like you just said, the, the, the support, I have the support, mm -hmm. but it's, it's like bite your teeth, bite your tongue kind of support. Like it's, it's like my, my mom well, uh, similar to what Tori was saying, like my mom was not supportive of my, my trip last year. Like my first time being here. Like to the point where it was my birthday. I left two days after my birthday. My mom and I weren't even speaking mm -hmm. because she was, she just could not fathom how I was coming over here by myself. That was her biggest thing. Mm -hmm. You're going, but you're going by yourself. Like, what, do you have a death wish? That's what she kept saying. Oh. You have a death wish? And I'm like, wait, what does that mean? Like, it's not... It's not like I, I I didn't I couldn't understand that because I guess my mindset and my understanding of what Thailand was like, mm -hmm. why would I have a death wish? But people don't know. Like they're so excuse me, ignorant to what other countries are like. They just think everything's a third world country mm -hmm. and you are, you know, you're you're eating off the floor and you have no clean water and you it's that's what they think. And yeah. it's our job to kind of like Show them, like, this is not what it is. Yeah. I, I'm, I've even, to, to um, some friends at home, like, I've told them certain things. They're like, oh, they got that over there? Yeah, yeah right. I'm I like, yeah, I just went to MAC yeah. yesterday and got my, my eyebrow pencil. They have MAC over there? Right. People be surprised like, that we got like, Wi-Fi. What? We have yeah. everything yeah. over here. There's right. everything mm -hmm. over here. Like, yeah. literally everything you can think of yeah. is but, over here. So, okay. But what's interesting is, like, Every single one of us share that experience is yeah. that we've become expats. We've moved to as about opposite side of the world from the yeah. U.S. And now we're different to our families. Right. And they're different to us. And right. so that can right. be yeah, a little lonely, too. Right. Yeah. But right. that can be a little bit lonely, yeah, no, too. Yeah. So yeah. even, yeah. you know, thinking about, you know, going back to visit and going for the holidays, like, it's changed. Right. It's changed for us. So now. And that's okay. It is okay. Yeah. It is okay. But now you have to try and figure out your traditions, find your family here with right. a group of people who some are more permanent. Some people kind of just pass through. Sometimes yeah. you build these amazing friendships and then they're like, oh, bye, I'm leaving. But no, but like, I'm so thankful for the fact that Ebony Expats is here. That's why we right. stayed in Thailand. That's why we moved to Bangkok because we lived in a different city and we knew Thailand was better, but it wasn't everything we looked for and this helps. And then, you know, we've got... Friendsgiving coming up, right. and I'm I'm so excited. Like I'm looking yeah. forward right. to that, yeah. and we're cooking and we're eating food from back. Like right. last year we ate that macaroni and cheese. Last year, <laughs> last year we ate Thai food at a restaurant with a bunch of South Africans. Love them, but I didn't even realize it was gonna be the holidays. Like it was so out of my mind. Like oh okay, I'm leaving in August, whatever. And then I was like, wait, Thanksgiving. Like because Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday just mm -hmm. because I like to eat. I like to, I like to eat and I like to cook. I, so, I love it. So, yeah. so my my biggest tradition at home is my mom passed the torch to me, so I'm the cooker. I cook everything. So you know I cook and then you know I I'm a homey person. I'm 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 a home maker. Like I like to cook for people. I like to make people feel comfortable and happy and you know smiles on their face, belly and you know food in their belly. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wait, but what am I gonna do for Thanksgiving? So that's why I talked to you about it. I'm like, so. We gonna have a Thanksgiving because anyway. we need to do something because right. I need I need some food from home. I wasn't even homesick yet, but I still felt like I needed that. And then, like you said, um, Ebony Express has saved like this whole expect. I don't even want to go home. <laughs> like honestly, if my sister was not about to have a baby mm -hmm. in January. And I had like my proper visa to stay. I wouldn't be leaving, mm -hmm. but I have to. Yeah. But I'm going to be back. It's funny that you say that. <laughs> I'm going to be back. back. Gonna be yeah. back. <laughs> because like for me, like I said, like holidays wasn't a thing. But like last year was like she said, it wasn't it wasn't bad because they really tried. The community. <laughs> the community. Yeah, like yeah. Who, well, when we were in the, the UTA, yeah. like they, yeah. they really tried, but it just wasn't yeah, that. Yeah, we can't get it. And then, yeah. and I was thinking yeah. about it, I was like, you know, 
we probably should do Thanksgiving, but I, I felt weird about suggesting it. And then my cousin passed away when we were here. She she was killed. So it was very so my uncle passed right before we got before we went back in March. My other her grandma passed while we were there in March. My other uncle passed as soon as we got back here. And then my cousin got killed um, a couple of weeks ago. So it's been kind of reeling for me uh, and and her, but she she's been been great. It's been kind of reeling for me. So like when Thanksgiving was happening, I was excited just to be around people. I know a few of y'all came out um, when my cousin passed, and you know I love y'all for that. Uh, you won't ever hear me say that. Again. But no, like that was. I'm glad you did that, and I should. We we have to understand like. Like I said earlier, we pioneers with leaders in this. We have to put these things out there that we want as opposed to holding in because somebody else needs it too. Yeah. And then, you know, go ahead, go ahead. I felt really bad because, like, since I've been here, like, in the year and seven months, like, when I first got here, my brother passed away basically, like, last year, mm-hmm. and, like, my oldest brother. And then only a few months later, his daughter, my niece, passed away. Oh, no. My oldest niece. And both of those times, like, I have another niece that's her little sister that has the same dad, same mom as her. And I couldn't go home because I didn't have the money to go home. My mom was like, what's the point? And I didn't want to stress her out about paying for me to get home, you know. And at the same time, it was like the last time I saw them, they were alive. So why even put myself through that? So it was this whole thing that I went through for like a few months and I was like, feeling so guilty about Mm -hmm. my life here because I was like, should I be this happy? Should I be living my best life while I'm sitting here and people are, I'm losing people close to me back home. And I know that my mother is suffering, you know, and now she's even more sad thinking like, oh, my daughter's halfway across the world. And I just lost my oldest son and my youngest daughter is halfway across the world and like losing a niece. And then like talking to like my niece that is still alive and like, talking to her and she's almost like, I'm trying to be strong auntie, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you're literally 15 and you just lost your dad and your older sister. There's no one you should be being strong for, like at all. Like you should be able to be upset. And she's just like, you know, I don't have anyone. And she just feels so like lost. And I feel like there's things that I could be doing that I'm not doing. So a lot of times when I'm like seeing all these like terrible things happening back home, I'm like, dang, should I really be living here? Like, should I go back home now? Like, because people are literally like, like dying, like people are going that's away. That's a really good point. I think because I've been abroad like eight years totally, um, and one thing I feel all the time the guilt about being mm-hmm. away, yeah. and it like, kind of hurts me when I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah. I had another death in my family too. Uh, five years ago, my brother passed. My yeah. um, second, younger than me, but it's like I wasn't able to get back for that. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm always gone every single year. I'm not with my family like maybe once every two years or something like that. And it's just like. I feel bad about being abroad so much. And I miss my brother's graduation, my sister's graduation, them growing up. Like I've been away from them for so long. Even when I was back in the States, I was still like in university. Mm-hmm. So that was like a four year period that I wasn't with them. Mm-hmm. And then I was in high school, like, you know, a high school kid with his younger siblings. I'm not really gonna be with them all the damn yeah, time, you know? Really so when they're growing up, I wasn't really a part of that. So yeah. like I, was, I was here, I was in South Korea. I was like living a great life. I was happy as hell, but like, you know, posting pictures, Instagram on Facebook, and it's like, oh, I'm doing so good. And everyone's back home just like, not saying that they're not doing great in their own way, mm-hmm. but it's just, I always felt guilt about mm-hmm. not being there. You know, it's like my mom would call me up, something's happening at home. You know, how does she help my brother and sister? What's going on? You know, and I feel like, man, if I were there, things would be really great. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> right, that's right, how right, I right. feel. Right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah, home, feel like then that. everything's going to be fitting perfectly together. You know, mm-hmm. I can help out with this, I can do this. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, but yeah. that's not necessarily true, but it's, it's the burden that I put on myself saying, mm-hmm. like, by me being away, I'm taking something away from them. Yeah. Um, and that's, like, definitely, like, putting a lot of pressure on me that shouldn't be there, right. but also, like, kind of taking away their power of their self. You I know? agree. So I they're agree. adults. My family, yeah. they're, they're grown-ass people. Mm-hmm. They can do all they need to do. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I still have that, like, nagging feeling. Like, yeah. Leak, you've been gone for, like, a yeah. decade. Like you had so much time to do things why didn't you make things better so i'm still trying to you know navigate that space between you know me feeling responsible but also you know not feeling responsible right you know? mm-hmm. and, I, and i don't know like i think it's gotten more difficult every year that i've been here 
Um, right. this, the longer time yeah. passes, you've been here longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, cause, and at this point in time, I don't even know what home is for me anymore. Like mm-hmm. before, right. before, like after while I was living in Korea the first time, I, was, I could go back home, and that's that's my house back in Atlanta. That's where I live, you know. And I just go on holiday for a year in a new country. <laughs> but now it's like. I don't, I don't like, I don't do anything back home anymore. I'm home maybe, you know, two weeks out of a year. So home is where I am. And, yeah. and it's just, right. where am I going right. to be next year? You know, in three years, I mean, where, where, where do my roots, where do my roots grow? Yeah. So it's like this whole like mix yeah. of, of stress, this ball that I live in that I hope gets easier over time. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't, I don't think it really has. It gets more confusing for me now. Some, sometimes I, you know that saying, home is where the heart is. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's cliche as it is. It's <laughs> yeah. cliche as it is. It it gives me comfort mm. because, mm. like, it's people I love in Thailand. And it's people I love in the United States. Mm. Mm. Um, it's people that I love that that are in Canada. And I sit there and I think about it. Like, you know, I got these places I can go. You know, and then like I can extend that to different places. Like, if I want to mm. go live in South America, like I, some people that I find that I live, I got a friend that, that lives in Peru that I met in Montreal. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, to paraphrase Brooke, Biggie, spread a little Brooklyn way. You know, and you can just, you can spread everything around the world and like the world can be your home. Because like, that's and that's, true. that's just why I, 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 no, I definitely agree. I mean, I feel like, you know, being in a broad different places, I, I found families everywhere, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's always going to be that biological pull back, you know, to the of home course. roots, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and, I, and I would think, you know, if my mom and brothers and sister came out here just to be here, my oh, dad, I'd be good. Yeah. You're still much better. You just come here. Right. Yeah. We got yeah. Christmas. You yeah. just come here. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas on the beach. Yeah. 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 A bungalow. We have like a Let's bungalow. It's a new life. tradition. <laughs> No more snow. Well, it's crazy. Uh, it's a story that someone, I don't know who, who said it, but they were like, uh, they were talking about tradition. And they was like, Mom, why do you, they would make this stew in this giant, like, vat of, of something. This big, big pot. And they was like, the family wasn't that big. And so the baby was like, Mom, why do you make it in that big pot? And she was like, that's how my mom did it. So the baby went and asked Grandma. Why do you make it in that big pot? That's how my mom did it. And so she goes, ask great grandma, great grandma, why you make it in this big pot? Because that was the only pot that we had. So whenever I think about tradition, it's like you can stop and start traditions. Exactly. They just need to make sense. To you. That's yeah, true. absolutely. That's true. Yeah. And that's I like that. Like, we create yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I've been doing that all day. Yeah. A new tradition. But I do have a question though. We've all been here. Like most of us have been here for a year. But we like typically at that one year mark, or like you know that mm. eight month mark, or whatever ten month mark. You're like, you know what? Okay, I gotta decide. Am I gonna stay here for yes. another year? Yeah. Or am I gonna like go home? right so we've all made the decision once or twice or three times to kind of stay 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 seven times myself (laughs) but um at this point you've been here for like four months right yeah so like where's your head at with that because i mean i mean i know it's probably what you're going to say but you know how are you feeling about that Uh, i don't know Um, i really 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 don't know some weeks i'm like killing it i'm figuring stuff out i feel like i'm making great connections and then I'll have a week where all I do is go to work and go to my condo. And I'm like, where is the community here? I am very alone. I'm missing so many things back home. Like, I could just catch this flight and mm-hmm. just have my family back. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, for myself, I want to personally make it until the spring. Because I told myself I would stay like a year and I finish out my contract. So mm-hmm. I, I know I want to accomplish that within myself. But it just depends on... I call myself like a what if person. So like it depends on a lot of factors. So like if I find a school that will pay me more money and I don't, if I'm not stressing about money more, that will right. make it easier for me to want to say. And then if I find more of a regular community, because we put on great events and that's great, but sometimes it's only once a month. Like right. I need more weekly touch points with mm-hmm. people to build that community here because the place that I live around is not it. Right. Like it's not there. You can hang out so much more. Yeah, but it's like I also don't want to also be reaching out to one person every single day. Like, what are you doing tonight? I'm I'm lonely. Like I'm bored. 
And oh, I want to like, get it. Down. I get it. And that's, that's our life. So yeah. why everyone's life? life as an expat, we all started yeah, that, we place. All that way. And okay. that's why. Uh, that's why yeah. I've been trying to get better at telling people I love, so they do at least feel that type of community that you're looking yeah. for. Yeah. And hopefully, I can get that back. Like me and Ashley have been hanging out, man. Tough. Uh, we're both creative people. We're creating. We're both writers. We've been trying to write. We've been basically just. Basically brainstorming. We haven't done yeah. much writing. Yeah, we actually <laughs> haven't. That the whole plan has been to, to to get together and do some work, but we literally just keep talking about our lives. Yeah. Like we literally that's just a, talk yeah, for that's hours. hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah, we just sit and talk. Like yeah. it, you know, I've been suffering really bad lately from um, anxiety panic attacks um, that have been like really scary. And every time I have one, I'm like, Julian, I need to talk. Like he's he's trying to help me figure out what is triggering these things. Like and vice versa. Know. Like we just, <laughs> it, I get what you're saying. Like the you need to have that that closeness, even if it's to go get some lunch. Yeah. yeah and, but what I will say about that is like for me, I don't see I, I see it as like whatever. Like it's so like one thing that you pointed out is that like I don't want to be hitting somebody up every day and saying like go get some food. But if you want that person to be your friend and if there is a connection, like I don't know how many times you guys have met up, but if it's been several times and it sounds like it has, mm-hmm. it's because like y'all made that effort, right? Yeah. And like for me, I love it when I see people within the community that we've created create their own little pockets because like that is what's supposed to happen like you're not going like I don't expect everyone to get together in a big group and then like all of a sudden you're able to like vibe and like we have big groups because sometimes like it's not like you're not going to get that same experience anyway in a social event as you would with like a one-on-one lunch or just like hey like Let's go get some food. Let's right. go get some drinks. Like, I'm in the city. What's going on? And and that can be hard, but that's where it comes to, like, what are you putting out in order to receive in? And, like, what do you want? Like, you literally create and design the experience that you want. And, mm-hmm. and that's just how I kind of, it's just like, hey, I'm going to put together, like, a weekly ice cream social. If anybody wants to come have ice cream on Saturday, come you have know, ice cream. You the know? thing about that, it's kind of tough, though, because I'm, like, thinking about when you're leaving the States and coming abroad, yeah. like, you have to start a whole new life, right? You yeah. come yes. to a place where we don't speak the language. You don't even know where to meet people. And right, I think like, to be honest, we never really learn how to make friends that's as true. adults. Nope. You know what I mean? Like, when no. you're yeah. 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 Not you at don't all. learn that that's skill true. when you're like, you know, 20, Some of these 30 years old. Be bold. So when I've you're learned coming, that lately. Yeah. So when you're coming from like, a place where you have your people around you back in the states or whatever mm. and coming to a new country it's like you're kind of dropped into like this whole new bucket of the language yeah. of how to meet people people that you don't like speak yeah. english might not be from your country yeah. so the whole cultural clash and it's like i don't oh, no, know how to meet people like what mm-hmm. do i do you know when I, when I first started doing that it was i was like just going to bars because it was like each me to just get drunk and go have a conversation and then build friends from there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah, not right. the best solution. I mean, <laughs> I but that's what made me stay here too. Yeah. Like I, that, that, like I stayed here for a year and then once that year was finished, I was like, dang, I did not work this whole year and planting all these little seeds mm. just to start seeding them budding to just rip them out yeah. of the soil. Mm. And I was like, Troy, it's not time to go. But like, <laughs> no, like no, seriously, no, that's no. how what happened to me. It was like, when I got here, I was really alone. And I actually did a video about this on my Muse account mm-hmm. because I was like, when I said, when you feel lonely, it was like, you know what I really did? I really got to know myself here. And I will say that yes. before in America, I did not know myself as much yes. as I do now. Yes. I found out what I was truly interested in. Yes. I found out the type of people I like to be yes. around. Yes. I found out all these types of things by being alone, yes. by myself, in my room, sitting there like, okay, yes. Troy, what do you like to do? Yes. Okay, what do you enjoy doing in your free time? Right. And then I started going to these environments where I was finding these That's people that were into art, it. that were into festivals, that were into yes. music, that were yeah. into whatever yes. I was yeah. into. And then I was like, just planning little seeds. It wasn't even like I was texting them every day or I was jumping from group to group. But it was like eventually, after I found, like after about a certain amount of time, I was like, dang, I actually do have friends in like so many different pockets that if I want to go do something, I can always call up this person mm-hmm. to go do this, to go do this. And then like at the end of that year, I was like, no way that I just did all this work. And I actually <laughs> felt, I just felt so like, yeah. I was like, wow, Troy, like, this is how you do it. Like, you're doing it right. Right. You, it's not time to go yet. You need another year to like, let that stuff grow and foster. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, after now the second year, I'm like, dang, now I really love people. <laughs> like, I really don't want to leave my friends, my communities, yeah, right. all these things. Like, I really like the, 
with what I've grown to do. Mm. But it did start off with a lot of being alone That's and scary. a lot of learning who yeah. I was. Yeah. Yeah. It was terrifying for a while. I mean, it is. I don't want to know about myself. You don't want to hear your thoughts all the time. I feel like that's the only way you can create what you want. Because Absolutely. Like if, you create your own reality. Exactly. Like, if you do want friends or, like, if you say I'm going to get some ice cream and they're going to show up in their flip-flops and their hair and the bun, they come to get ice cream, you literally have to create that. And and I I realized that, like, friendships have a responsibility and, like, they take effort. And it also starts with, like, you know how they say, like, you can't expect other people to love you if you don't love yourself? Mm-hmm. I, like, I have so many revelations in this past week that, like, if I want to have good friends and good people around me, like, a, I'd be putting that out, but mm-hmm. also anything that's not aligned with that has got to go and give a damn. Like, it got yes. to go because it's like, you ain't serving me and I'm not serving you. So, like, what are we doing here? Relationships, whatever. But then it's like, you literally create and you show people the type of person that you are and what you expect from friendships. And I think that, like, it does come with being alone. And, like, when I came to Thailand, I was so broken. Like, who I am today, like, who's the person, who's, who's known me, like, the longest? Like, probably you, mm, probably. maybe. But like, who I am good, today, huh? You were still good when I met you. You were always But, like, is that, is yeah, that, 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 right now, though, right now, you see the real hurt of. Like, yeah, that's a good point. point. That's and we don't see behind closed doors as well, so, you know. Exactly. And I just had a revelation this, this past week that, like, I have been playing small, like out of fear, like on some fear mm-hmm. shit. Like realistically, when I look back in my past life, like even as a kid, like we kind of like walked on eggshells just because like my dad and like going back to the patriarchy thing where it's like mm-hmm. your dad is just like, and like that in black households for the most part, like we don't, we don't realize it, but like that did places like this underlying fear yeah, within who things, you are. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I get these relationships relationship with these guys who's doing dumb shit and like I'm not able to be like fully myself and like I'm always muting myself and walking mm. on eggshells like I genuinely now know who I am I love myself I've always been like confident and like mm. loving myself but like I, I went in so and yeah. like I love I know who I like I know what I don't like I know where I want to go if somebody hit me up and say I want to go have ice cream if I don't like that yeah. I'm just not doing it and like if I want something though then I'm gonna create that awesome. yeah like and that, I'm Probably was alluding to that also, but just to kind of drive it home, you gotta trust yourself because you know what you like. That's true. You know what you don't like. Right. And if you, you know don't, find you, out. Right. Yeah. You gotta find out. Like, because yeah. you, you don't want to be out here doing some stuff that you don't like. It's like, fam, you're gonna hate it. Yeah. Because and life don't have to be that way. It don't. No. And everybody has intuition. See, that's the thing. I, I feel like a lot of people don't follow their intuition because they, they second guess themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's something that my, my therapist from home, um, she's a spiritualist. Mm-hmm. So she's been working on working with me on trusting my gut, like trusting my spirit mm-hmm. and what like I'm a second guesser and I'm an overthinker. Mm-hmm. So but nine times out of ten, my first thought is always the right one. And then when I do something else outside of that first thought, I'm always like, shit, yeah. I should have listened to myself. Like I, I knew yeah. that first thought was the way to go, <laughs> yeah. but you you wanted to second guess, guess yourself. So now, now you're messed up and now you have to do something else. So it's also like listening to yourself. Yeah. Like if you don't feel, I, I example, the, the Halloween party, I should not have gone to the Halloween mm-hmm. party. Uh, but the, I think the other part of the process is messing up. Or Absolutely. effing up. Because, like, when you don't go with your first thought or your first situation, and that one turns out to be right. And it's like, dang, I should listen to myself. But at this point, you made the decision. Live with it. And I honestly, I remember we talked about that, about you stay at home. And it's like, yeah, maybe you should have stayed home, but you didn't. You're not going to be... One thing, I was happy to see. Sorry. I was happy to see you because my cousin had passed a week before yours right. did. So I was happy to be able to to be be there for you like you was for me. I was also happy to see you that you were okay. I was happy to right. see Seeing you. Seeing y'all made me feel better. See, so, just be, that's why you know I ended up leaving with y'all and going to eat yeah. because you guys understood, like literally understood, not like in yeah. the moment understood. Mm-hmm. Like of course we all understand loss, but in the moment you literally understood exactly what I was feeling. And that's the thing, like when you make that quote unquote wrong decision, you can still learn from that at least. At right. least you can learn from like, okay, next time I'm gonna just, you know, do what I should have did in the first place. 
Right. But you can't you can't sit there and fight yourself based on the decision that you made. And I, mm-hmm. go ahead. No, I would just say, and I also this may be just like a me belief. I don't know if it's other people's beliefs, but I don't believe in bad decisions, good or bad decisions. Mm-hmm. So I don't see I don't beat myself up about any kind of decisions that I make. I don't think that any decision is either good nor bad. It's just a decision. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, the universe, God, whoever mm-hmm. you believe in, is always trying to align us to be the best option possible, Absolutely. the best person that we can. Yeah. So there's no good or bad decision. It just depends on whatever decision you decide to make. Mm-hmm. There's a path for that. And that path is still going to try to push you to align you into whatever you're supposed to get to. Right. So every time I make a decision, I'm like, you know, you went. But at the end of the day, it wasn't a bad decision. Literally every time I've left the country for more than five days, I've lost. I've had a death. So that to, in my head messes with me. Kind of like what you said. Like if I were home... Things would be okay, hunky dory, wonderful. But I decided to live my best life somewhere, and now, now somebody dies. That's another thing that uh, makes me scared to to do the permanent move. Is how I felt not being able to be with my family when my cousin died, or last year when I was here, my uncle died. Uh, in the year before that, like my grandmother died before while I was um, on, on another vacation. Like it just in my head because loss is like so um so prevalent just with me you know because I lost my kids and I you know it just it the mindset of when you lose somebody and you're not able to be around the people that also know that person to feel comfort Mm -hmm. is is um just a little uncomfortable it's uncomfortable and that's an important thing to hit on too, because um, when we do feel upset about something, I think it's important to kind of remember what makes us feel good. You know, right. like for you, it might be going out with your friends, even though you have that like shitty morning, whatever happened, like, and you're like, you know what, I, need, I don't want to feel this way anymore. Let me just still right. go to the thing that makes me feel good usually right. yeah. and right. try to just like engage in that. Right. Like you might not feel like the typical happy person that you want to feel right, usually, right. but at least it's going to like, you know, you're going to be connected to like the happiness that you usually have, right. you know? And like right. going back to like what you are saying about like, it's tough being here. It's a new experience for you, you know, being abroad from your family and everything like that. Like there's still things you can do here that can remind you of home mm. that kind of like can bring a bit of that happiness you had back there. And I mean, no, it's probably difficult to find it because you're in a new place, you know, new friends, everything's all new, but at the same time, like. There are things that are fundamentally you that excite you, that you do, that, that are like, you know, oh, this is what I love to do. And finding that here, I think, is going to be clutch to kind of really, mm-hmm. like, making your stay that much more, you know, invigorating, memorable. To touch on, like, okay. you've been here four months, right? Yeah. And it probably feels like so long. And I remember when we were here four months, and I thought, like, we've been here long enough. Like, I, I kept telling myself, like, I should be good. I should be fine. I'm still fine. But I... When I tell you, like, it, it took a really long time. And then, mm-hmm. and I'm very fortunate to be married, honestly. We talk about it all the time. We at least have each other all the right, time. Right, right, And it's right. a big thing. But we, you know, we've been in Thailand almost, you know, a year, nine months, two years. We moved to Bangkok. And I'm like, we've lived in Thailand. This shouldn't be like starting over. But I actually see a therapist in Bangkok. Mm. She's wonderful. I started it in Thailand because for the first time in my life, I can afford to go to therapy. Right. Crazy. Mm-hmm. But I've been seeing her for a year now. And she kept telling me when we moved to Bangkok, she was happy. But she's like, give yourself a year. It's going to take you a year to settle. And I was like in denial. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And then I was a mess. And it like, I like pushed it down. Yeah. Because I kept saying, no, I've been in Thailand long enough. I know what I'm doing. I know where to, I know to go to 7-Eleven and get this stuff. But it it takes so much time to finally, I don't know, get comfortable again, Mm -hmm. to, to settle in, to figure out. Now, even though we only moved an hour south to find where all my comfort places are, my home again and, and feel okay. And. I think it also determine is also the term uh, determinant of your how you leave. That's true. How you leave where your your home mm-hmm. is, like what what terms you leave on. Like Tori, Tori's so comfortable and good in her life because she didn't leave on the best terms at home. You know what I mean? So it wasn't mm-hmm. like she was leaving anything significant. You are extremely close to your family, especially yeah. your dad, and how you guys go to your brother's games, and you know, there's so many mm-hmm. things there. That probably have you like, well, damn, I miss doing that, you know, and then them reminding you, oh, right now we be doing this. So it probably is another reason why it's like, well, I 
guess I've been here enough. You know, I you know, it was a good experience. I'm head out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, love. right? Exactly. So it's like a good person. We're like, no, stay, stay, stay. Yeah. We like you. Join our family here, but you don't have to. It doesn't mean that we won't all be still family. Like right. I, like we, we. That's my brother. Like hands down, all the way. Like that's what it is. Like regardless of if I come back or not. Like this is just. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Even if I decide not to come back for good, I'm not. I'm gonna come back. Right. You know, I'm gonna come back to. I'll be the one to visit y'all. You know, if I don't come to live, I'm hold I'll be the. I'll be the family member to come visit y'all. I'm gonna hold you to. I'm so serious. <laughs> right. I'm so serious. I'm gonna hold I'm you to that. Well, I think that's a nice way to end this. Just knowing that. Even though it is tough individually, no matter how long you've been living overseas, we do have each other. Right. We we can come together. Community. We can do stuff exactly community. community. And and also just like call up your family. Yeah. Like it's okay to right. call them up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Video true. chat, get on these calls. Yeah. You might have to stay up late or wake yeah. up early, but yeah. we can still connect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And one, that's the beauty. One, of one thing I was listening to an interview with uh little brother the rap group. Uh, Big Pooh said, um, I can't think of the dude who said it to him, but he said, if I think about you, I'm going to hit you. So if I'm thinking about you, I'm going to call you, I'm going to text you, I'm going to email yeah. you, I'm going to contact you. Right. So, and like, that's something important because it's like, sometimes we don't want to do that because we don't want to feel like we're bugging them. Like, mm -hmm. And I've heard my family members like, I don't, I don't want to bug you, I don't want to wake you. Like, you know, you can send me a text, you can send me an email, you can, my phone on silent when I sleep anyway. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. I'll get it then yeah so but yeah let's, man let's like connect. yeah just connect and that goes for the people at home all of our family all of our friends hit us up we do want to talk right. like right. Yes. we're like technology is, is there and like yeah. it's a facebook thing. messenger is free <laughs> exactly <laughs> whatsapp is it's free WhatsApp. Yeah, exactly line, yeah. line. Hit, hit us up yeah, yeah. Hit us I, up. I do my dad did tell me to call my aunt cat and my it's aunt baby so i, I we'll call them yes call. i got i do have to call them <laughs> marcel marcel <laughs> yes i got i, I got a <laughs> list of people <laughs> I love, my I love my beauty today. I love my beauty. We love y'all. Happy holidays! And if you don't celebrate the holidays, be happy anyway. <laughs>